One of the things that I remember from early days of leadership uh, training and reading in the 1980s and 90s was this old Kubler-Ross uh, graph that uh, showed the flow of change that would kind of uh, ebb and make its way through uh, high points and low points and then high points again through uh, life as any individual or group of people were coming through uh, a time of transition around anything. And what Kubler-Ross reminds us of is that uh, there is a lot of work to be done pastorally as we enter and engage in the change trend. Uh, and then as we kind of hit the bottom or the valley of that work, uh, what we realize is that there is a, uh, a lot of grief uh, and sadness about uh, how our expectations have been changed and how uh, life has been changed and how those things which we thought were normal and those things that we thought could depend upon uh, are, are uh, being uh, kind of like shifting sand beneath our feet. But as we come to grips with that pain and grief around what we thought would be, uh, it also enables us to grab hold of agency as we come back out of the change draft. All of us uh, today, whether it's with our family, our friends, whether it's our workplaces, could imagine ourselves uh, in any different part of uh, that kind of uh, ebb and flow of uh, living with and in the midst of COVID-19, uh, uh, the coronavirus. Uh, we might find ourselves at any one time with any one group making our way through that pretty well. And yet at the same time, when we get home or leave the offices in our home or uh, find our way to some peace, we might find that we backslide into uh, grief uh, and despair about uh, what uh, is surrounding us. You know, the, the reality of all of that is that what we're dealing with is the recognition uh, or the theological myth-making, if you will, that we, uh, that we believe and live with most days in our society. And that is that work or the things that I do or the things that I practice uh, all in its normalcy will protect me. And what we've come to find out is that we are uh, vulnerable uh, human beings and we are seeking uh, hope uh, and courage. Now certainly Paul writing and one of the earliest Christian writers uh, writing in the midst of his culture and his time and his context dealt with similar things as the myths of his age were falling away. Uh, he raised up our hope uh, in Christ, this idea uh, that God is present with us, uh, that God has acted uh, in the cross and in the resurrection, that God has acted in the incarnation and being present in this world and in our lives. And so we see that uh, throughout Paul's letters, especially though uh, in 2 Corinthians, when he talks about the myths of this age uh, passing away and how Christians now grab hold of uh, hope that is in Christ. This hope was so powerful that the first Christians uh, would uh, decorate, if you can imagine their sarcophagi, uh, their, their sarcophagi, uh, or the, the walls of the tombs in the catacombs with an image of the good shepherd. Sometimes it might be Lazarus holding the gospel, kind of that, that idea that he is our precursor to the resurrection, human resurrection. But, it, but, but many images of uh, the good shepherd. And <clears throat> that this is a, a, a sign, an image, if you will, that contradicts the falling away of the myths of Caesar and the gods and demigods. Here is the image that the first Christian sees on. It's an image of a good shepherd. Of course, immediately the passages from Scripture come back to us, don't they? The image of the good shepherd who calls our name, who comes after us uh, in the darkness, whose staff protects us in the dark of the night, who does not run away like the hired hand, but the shepherd who guides and is present uh, with us uh, in our lives. Here is the image uh, for Christians in life and persecution 
uh, in war and in death, the image of uh, a good shepherd, the good shepherd. Uh, not a myth, but a reality uh, where our faith and hope uh, are combined, combined uh, together. This is our image in this moment, an image that we should grab a hold on, especially this week as we find ourselves in a variety of places. Uh, help us to be uh, a good shepherd to others, as C.S. Lewis reminds us, to be the little Christ. Help us to be good shepherds to our friends and our family, our neighbors, our, our workmates, even as we reach out across uh, 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 the virtual uh, uh, methods of technology, pick up the phone to do this work, to uh, do what we can in giving and volunteering and helping uh, and all of these new manners and ways in which we're finding ourselves prepared and ready to do this. Be good shepherds. But most of all, most of all, to remember, to remember that it is the good shepherd that is with us. Uh, in this present moment, who has suffered before us, who has died before us, who has been resurrected before us. Remember in this moment that it is the Good Shepherd who is with each of us and with our families and with our friends. And in this moment of trial, let us, like the first Christians and like Paul, Remember the myths that promise to protect us even now are fading away as we grab hold of the image of the Good Shepherd who knows our name, who calls us by name, and who protects us even in the darkest of night. And so I leave you today, this, this week, uh, after a week of continued work and labor, uh, uh, dealing with COVID-19 and the, corona, the, the coronavirus. I leave you with, of course, uh, these, these words. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me besides the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. For I know I'm not alone in this fight. Thou preparest a table before me. In the presence of mine enemies, thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely, surely, our hope, our belief, our faith, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever, forever. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord deliver you and shepherd you in this time. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen.